Hey everyone, it's Laura, Creative Twilight. Today I wanted to talk about painting and how to become a better painter. A lot of beginner painters give up too early. They'll see the work of other painters and instead of becoming inspired, they'll become discouraged. What I want to do is show you where I began, where I'm at now, and how I got there. I painted this killer cam back in 2006. I'd just gotten into Warhammer 40k, met a bunch of buddies from high school who I hadn't seen in 10 years and they were still playing, so they dragged me into it. Started up an orc army, this was my first purchase, and where I began. I had painted previously with Gorka Morka back in 96-97, but I don't have any photos of it. So this is my first documented miniature that I started painting. The only painting technique I knew at the time was dry brushing. I base coated this can black, I dry brushed tin bits, dry brushed lead belcher, dry brushed red on the buzzsaw, and that was it. There's no washes, there's no layering, there's nothing advanced going on at all with this model. So this is where I began. So this is a year later, 2007. The War Boss and the Big Mech. The Big Mech I did a lot of conversion work on. I did a backpack. That's a custom force field. I did the hammer. I just thought it looked cool. The War Boss, I put the spikes on the shoulder. That's green stuff. Most of this was done with dry brushing, at least the weapons and the metals. There, I didn't have any washes. I didn't have any inks. Uh, there's some basic layering on the skin that you can see, not very subtle, not blended, there's nothing special. Most everything is just kind of painted flat, there's a few highlights here and there, but it's all very simple. These D&D miniatures were painted in 2009, so three years since Akilah Can. In that time I had discovered washes. At the time, you really couldn't buy them, maybe you could, but at this point I was using inks adding flow improver to create a wash. And that's what we had here. And it made a huge difference. I now had shadows to complement the highlights I was putting on there. There's some very simple layering, but it's mostly just washes with one to two levels of highlights on there, and that's it. But the difference is amazing when you compare it to the Killer Can three years ago. So it's just adding this one simple technique, just adding washes, made a huge difference. Here's another D&D miniature I'd done for the same client. It's kind of a lot of what you saw before, but this is where I really began layering. You can see the layering on here pretty well, especially because it's not blended. But you'll see I have, I did a base coat, I did a wash, and then I layered up to the highlight. You know, there's, there's the base coat, wash, one layer, highlight. So there's four different levels on here. This is where I really began to pick it up. And I was very happy with this model at the time, and looking at it now, it's still a good looking model. I can't complain at all about this. So this is where everything kind of started to turn around for me, more so than previously. I was just taking what I would learned and taking it up another level. And that's all getting better at painting is, is pushing yourself, trying something different. And it's not always going to work, but when it does, it's the most amazing feeling. I painted this model in 2011. This is my Countess Shrike that I converted and done some kit bashing with. The big thing on this model, when I started playing Space Marines in general, was doing freehand. There's a freehand chapter symbol on the left shoulder, which is hard to see in the picture. I had done another emblem on the right, and I had done the writing on the armor. This is where I first started doing this. So now I was putting a bunch of different things together. I had layering, I had edge highlighting, I had shading, and I had freehand. So at this point I'd really covered all of the basics, and it's a good looking model. I still like it today. I still have it, and I was very happy with the conversion work. So this is where everything was coalescing into to one thing, and I really started to enjoy painting at this point because I was seeing my progression. I was very happy with what I was doing. I was trying new techniques. I was learning, and that's all you have to do, as I said previously. Just keep pushing. Keep trying new things, even if it's something simple. Freehand is not as complicated as you think it is. It's just one little thing, but it makes a huge difference on a model to add those unique details. And it's something you can learn very easily. I have a tutorial on the site. I'll drop it in the link below. But just push. Keep trying something different. Put it all together on one model, and you're going to love the results. So as you can see, I had fallen to chaos. This is 2012. I took these Terminators. They were Loyalist ones from Assault on Blackreach, if I recall correctly. And I converted them into Obliterators. I started doing a lot of green stuff work, a lot of sculpting, and that was helping my painting as well. Because I was creating something unique, something I liked, something I was interested in, that in turn helped me to want to paint better, to learn new things. 
So the big thing I was working on on this particular set of models was OSL. So the power fist, I was trying to create this blue glow. I was casting it onto the armor, and this was new and exciting for me. I was having a lot of fun. It was a huge learning experience. I had a lot of, lot of mistakes, but I got help from fellow painters, and that's something that everybody should do is just seek constructive criticism. If you don't know how to do something, ask somebody, learn. It's the only way you're going to get better. So for the next four years, I'd plateaued as a painter. This is something I feel every painter reaches. You reach a point where you feel like you have a grasp of all of the basic fundamentals, and I did. And it was just boring. I was just doing the same thing over and over. I was painting Chaos Marines. I had a lot to do. And what I was doing just wasn't exciting me. I loved having the models completed, but the process wasn't something I was loving anymore. And that kind of bothered me. Um, I didn't know what to do. I, I was trying to do some new techniques, but I, I didn't know where to go from here. And it wasn't until 2015 when Todd Swanson came in and did a painting clinic that my interest changed a lot. He's local to the area. He came in and he taught us how to do blending. And it was an amazing course and I learned a ton. I was extremely excited to paint again. I was invigorated. I wanted to start a new project. And that's what learning new techniques will do in pushing yourself. It just it refuels that fire gets you interested in it. So you can never just settle for good enough. If you enjoy painting and you want to get better, you just have to keep pushing. We all reach a plateau. We all get bored with it. We all want to, you know, sometimes just give up on it, but just keep at it and just make yourself learn something new and that interest will come back. A few months after taking the class, I'd picked up some juggernauts of corn. I wanted to create a Herald of Corn for my demon allies I was using at the time. And this is what I created. This is the first model I did all blending on. I didn't use washes, things like that. It was all blended. I'd also worked on the non-metallic metal energy looking weapon there. Extremely happy with it. I was getting better with color theory. I was creating contrast. I had the blending here, which I was very happy with and still am today. I absolutely love this model. And it was a tipping point for me. I could finally see that I was getting better at painting. I was enjoying it again. The blending was just soothing for me. I don't know what it is, just something about the process. And I was having fun at painting again. So that's what you've got to do is just take something, learn from people better than you. Learning from Todd Swanson was the best thing that ever happened to my painting. You know, having a professional show you how to do what they do is amazing. I mean, you might not necessarily reach their level, but it's very motivating. And I put a lot of effort and a lot of work into this model, and I'm very proud of it. So there's a lot I could talk about on this Chaos Knight. I painted this in 2016, and I don't want to go over everything in detail because you'd all get bored. But the big things I was learning on here, as you can see, I was, I was applying the blending. I was continuing with that. I also started playing with glazes a lot more. The fleshy bits, I played with glazes to shift tones, to create blended transitions, things like that. Also, the shield on the front, I played with um, basically kind of playing around with color theory and creating something interesting and unique. The other thing I was starting to, starting to learn here was battle damage. Most of the battle damage you see is stuff that was already on the model to begin with, but it started creating my interest in, in creating that look on future models. So by having to paint it here, I started to get interested in something different. The battle cannon, I created a heat-stained look on that. And so there's just a lot going on, a lot of things I was putting together, and I was fueling my own desire to learn more. What I saw here made me want to get better. Very happy with what I did here, but I knew I could do better. I knew I could keep pushing myself. Also in 2016, with the release of Blood Bowl, I'd picked up the starter set and the human team here. So this is where I started taking the battle damage, where I started using it. So the big thing on here was... is Pretty simple stuff. I was creating scratches, but I was also creating scuffs and worn paint and stuff to give to give these guys the look that they've been playing the game. I was putting dirt on the armor. So between everything, between the blending, um, the highlighting, the battle damage, the worn look, I was creating something I was very happy with. And I still love this team. I still have them. I haven't played them for a few years, but this was a, a big change for me. Again, I was just taking everything I learned and applying it to a single thing. 
and that's really what you've got to do is, you know, if you learn a technique, you, you have to put it all together, compose it all into one thing and just look at it. And you can create some amazing stuff by doing that. The other big thing with painting this team was I had few models. I had 13 models to paint. This was a huge change from a Chaos Space Marines army where new stuff was coming out. I had to buy it. I had to build it. I had to paint it. I didn't have time to commit to making everything look really good. But with this team only having 13 models, I took my time. I think I spent about four months working on this team very slowly. This was also the first time I worked on models one at a time. I didn't batch paint these at all. Every model was done one at a time. It got its own unique attention, its own unique details, and it was a big change for me. I could spend the time I wanted, I could have fun with painting, and I could really push myself and not feel like I had a hundred other models to paint. So that's something I wanted to mention, is sometimes you just need to do something different. This was a huge change from painting 40k stuff, so not only was the setting different, what I needed to compose different, but it was just less. I could focus more, I could have fun with it, and that's what I love about smaller games like this. This is where I finally started to become a confident painter. 2018, I painted these Iron Skull Boys, and I put a lot of work into it. This orange armor was very difficult, but I only had four models, so I pushed through. I don't know that I'll ever paint orange again, but I love what I did here. I was doing a lot of stuff with battle damage. I was trying to get scuffs and scratches on there. I was trying to get metal armor showing through. I was also working with true metallic metal, which is where you take a metallic paints, and you kind of create a non-metallic metal look. It wasn't the best, I had done better later, but this is where I started with that. On the cloak I had done sponging to create a, a worn, weathered look to the leather, and I really like it. There was just a lot of different stuff I was trying out, and I was becoming confident, I was happy with what I was doing. Before this I was afraid to show people pictures. I mean I liked what I was doing, but I was afraid of what everybody else would think. By this point, I didn't really care what everyone else thought, I was painting for myself. I was having fun. I loved what I did. It didn't matter what anybody said. I was very proud of this work. And it takes a while to get there. For me, it took 12 years. For some people, it could take less. But you just have to stick with it, have fun, and just paint for yourself. The final thing I'm going to show you here is the ogre team I painted this year in 2019. This was me learning non-metallic metal. I'd done it before. But well, this was the first time that I really felt like I, I was getting a grasp on it. It's not the best, I'm going to get better at it, and I know that. But I'm very happy with what I accomplished, with what I know, and with the experience I have on this team. The other big thing for me with this team was I just had fun with it. I wanted to create something silly and interesting, so I went with pink. I did the whole bunny thing on these guys. I just wanted it to be fun. I spent a long time converting this team up, I spent a long time painting them, and it was just fun to do. And that's the biggest thing really, is just have fun with painting. Do something you enjoy, create something interesting and unique, create something in your own style. Don't worry about what other people are doing, how well they paint. Again, paint for yourself. Be happy with what you're doing. So to close this all out, just to go back over everything. If you want to become a better painter, first you need to commit to it. You need to put the time into it. For me, it's taken 13 years to reach this point. Again, some people might do it quicker. Some people might take longer. It doesn't matter. Paint for yourself and just enjoy it. Do what you can as you can and just always try to learn new things. When you paint something new, whether it's a different game, maybe it's a new unit, just commit to trying something different, trying to make it better. And that's the only way you're going to get better is to just keep pushing yourself. Get outside your comfort zone. Just don't stay content with what you're doing. It might be good, but if you don't push yourself, you're not going to get to that point where you're happy, where you're confident. And again, seek the advice of other painters. Ask the people you admire how they do what they do and take that and apply it to your painting. You might not do it as quickly as them, you might not do it as well as them, but you're going to learn. My other big piece of advice is to look at the work of really good painters and be inspired. Let it motivate you. Don't let it discourage you. I used to do that as well as I said previously. 
Now I see the work of better painters and I'm just amazed. I want to reach that level. It helps fuel me, helps keep me going, gives me something to strive for. If you don't have anything to strive for, you're just going to fail. Also, be sure that you're seeking constructive criticism. We're all defensive. We all want everyone to enjoy what we've painted. But constructive criticism is where you're going to grow. Take the advice of the people who know better. You might, you might not like what they have to say, but if you're seeking constructive criticism and they're giving it to you, take that advice, learn from it as hard as it may be, and then just keep pushing forward. So I hope you've learned something. I'm hoping to have motivated some fellow painters out there. And I hope you enjoyed what I had to show. Again, this is my road. Every road is different. But just enjoy the process and just have fun painting.